Hey guys, it's that again. Well, it is Sunday. I believe it is October 29th, maybe. Something to that effect. And uh, we're out in the garage. And it is 10 minutes after 8 this morning. Just came out, flipped the lights on. And uh, trying to decide where to start. It is a beautiful rainy day as predicted by the weather people uh, for once i think they finally figured it out that it's raining um got a lot of stuff to do outdoors but don't think that's going to happen today so what we're going to do is we're going to work on another project indoor project um as you can see here we have a quality Harbor Freight um, 12 inch, I think is what it's called, 5,000 capacity. Get the light out of it, 2 inch diameter, 12 inch long, 5 eighths pinhole, um, and a piece of pretty thick plate underneath here. Um, as you guys can see, probably a good quarter inch plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to weld this to that. That's pretty simple, right? Then we're gonna drill some holes. These holes are a little big. We'll drill something a little more appropriate. And we're gonna take this thing and we're going to take it over here under the bench. <clears throat> May have to move the transmission. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount that under, uh, right about where the transmission is here. In that general vicinity um, bolt that I got to drill and bolt it down to the floor and that's going to create a point where I can take my new uh, addition to the tools and uh, let's go this way I'll show you what I bought I know it's dark out here. Oh, it's sort of lighter. That right there is a lantern. No, that was picked up from my buddy. But right there is a 9,000 pound Harbor Freight jobby. Uh, here's the brochure here. 9,000 pound capacity off-road vehicle winch. And we're going to make the... Um, hitch thing you can buy it for 50 bucks but i put the one year warranty on it which was 49 dollars. so i didn't want to spend the extra 50 bucks on some cheap metal and i can whip up something i think that'll work just as well for a portable um, contraption so i can slide it out i also bought another there's another two inch receiver that will be mounted on my trailer my tandem axle trailer um, the tandem axle trailer is not here right now. It is up on the storage lot with the Volkswagen on it, uh, put to bed for winter. But I bought the other two-inch receiver. It's 12 bucks, so we have it. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I will try to cut in and give you another little snippet segment a little bit later when we show some progress. And uh, but we'll stay tuned. Bye bye. Hey guys. Well, I got you set up in the stand right now, and uh, I've got my plate drilled, finally, I found a piece. Um, ends up being that these are about 10 inches by 4.5, 4.49 to be exact, which is kind of crazy. But, um, so anyway, uh, I got those drilled, and now I'm fighting them in, and of course, it leaves you one washer short, one flat washer, so I was able to snag another flat washer. And get that back together but um yeah so this is the plate i'm using it's not quite as thick as the other plate for the floor mount um but i think this is going to work just fine and uh to uh to mount this on the bolts seem like they're long enough there was some concern that they're uh they're not catching enough nut in the um uh, reviews that i've read and uh, watched on YouTube, but um, these seem to be okay. 
So we're going to continue on and uh, get this thing bolted up. It is kind of interesting though. I mean, maybe it's a 16 millimeter and of course I can't find a 16 millimeter wrench. I do have a uh, 17 mil ratchet drive, but you know what? The 5 8 fits it like perfectly. So I don't know, kind of weird, but that's what we're going to use. So stay tuned. As you guys might be able to see in there, I am getting a full nut using this 3 16 plate. Um, so I would suggest not going over quarter inch. I mean, it's just a sixteenth of an inch out. So a quarter inch plate using the um, lock washer and the washer that's supplied in the hardware kit. I would stick with that. And um, so... Hey guys, what we got going on here is I got a piece of angle iron that I've uh, recycled from a uh, uh, a mantle, uh, like underneath a pellet stove. Um, it's kind of burnt up and rusty and nasty looking, but um, I think it'll serve our purpose just fine. I'll wire brush it and clean it up. And um, this edge looks like it's the tougher edge where this one here has been thinned out a little bit. So we're going to install this, welding it to the plate steel underneath, uh, giving us enough room to get to the bolts and clearing the bolts. I was actually thinking about notching it around the bolts to make this even closer. Um, I don't know yet. We're gonna keep thinking, if you guys, if you guys can see this, you know. Be tricky to see but it is like that's right up against the bolts so that's uh that's the next step i have two of these they're the same length we'll cut them at an angle fold them up and uh create the handle points so this is what i've decided to do um what i've got here i don't know if you can see it in the video but i have decided to notch around this so I have uh, cleaned this piece of angle iron up. It's, um, it's getting a little thin right here, but that's the edge I'm going to weld down. So the support will be added to the plate underneath. So basically all these are handles anyway. This doesn't really serve a lot of purpose. Um, so I'm going to fire up the torch if I can. I'm going to cut them with the torch. And uh, I don't know uh, if any of you guys got torches, but I don't think I could live without mine. Um, I use uh, oxygen and propane, which is a little different than oxyacetylene, so they cut a little different. So anyway, um, I've got a chalk line on here, or a soapstone, looking to see how much stuff I got down here I can catch on fire. Probably some, make for good video though. So let's see what we can do here. Ain't pretty, but it'll do. Go whack out this other one. Bumped my setting here a little bit. That one worked better. So, knock that little guy out of there. Little hot one. So, um, 
that's whacked out of there good now and uh, we'll clean it up with the grinder but I don't know if you guys can see that now but now we have enough room to clear the bolts we will do the same thing on the other side and uh, create another one of these pretty much the same idea knock some of the slag out of it and continue on well um it is a quarter to three now <laughs> and i'm still working on this stupid winch um i probably should have bought the 50 dollar piece of crap that goes on there to hold it because i ran into some trouble but the big trouble that i'm having right now and i'm looking for a screwdriver that might work that one might is the wiring i do not believe is correct according to the diagram um let me show you what's going on here there the heck it is next page okay so you look here you see three wires close together and one black one on the outside so we can flip this around and it'll look kind of like that three wires together one on the outside these two inner wires are red 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 and that outside wire is black doesn't say what that wire is but it looks to be black the issue is that if you look here this is the short wire this is a short one and that goes over here to the outside they're showing the long one coming out going to the circuit breaker into the battery so and they show the short one coming out and going to the motor short one short ones on the outside shouldn't be there short one as you guys can see the short one is on the inside and we're looking at it the right way so now i got to take the control box apart and figure that out and see if we can hook it up according to the directions hopefully that's right so we'll keep working on it hopefully today hey guys well i don't know if you guys can tell it is 10 minutes after four and finally i've got it figured out what they did was they switched the two wires around inside the control solenoid box um they they function they would hook up correctly like if if just in the diagram it said that this wire here the second one in goes to the motor and this one here would go to the battery problem was is this one was super short and this one was super long so you knew that the two wires got switched but the actual um uh connections inside the box were uh just a son of a gun to try to bend them and get them in there there's absolutely no room inside that box to try to adjust them and you don't want them touching you know too close to the other ones if they get some heat in them or anything so it's just a, a son of a gun but um we do have the positive i didn't put the circuit breaker in there yet um and we do have the negative kind of rigged up here on a battery and we have the remote control somewhere here laying in the bench here's the remote control and you can see the lead actually it's going to be tough but it does actually go backwards and forwards here let's watch the cable so that goes that way and that goes that way um they say something about you need to pull the thing out and like down to the last four or five rolls and then roll it back on or something i don't know that just sounds squirrely to me but um anyway uh they said you got to put like 500 pounds of pressure on it minimally and then roll it back in um i'll have to look that up and see but the uh carrier here as you can see is done 
I have the uh, the two inch. I saved you the uh, swearing. I welded this on the wrong direction, so it was pointed that way, the the direction of the um, where the uh, fair lead is. So that didn't work out so well. I had to grind it off, which is a total pain in the butt. Took me about an hour to get it off and then turned around going the right direction and get it reinstalled. Um, the metal here, this angle iron that I used was a little short. So uh, on this side, and uh, it was good on this side. So I was able to do my original thought was to put a piece of metal bar or something in here so you could grab a hold of it and grind those down so they were smooth. And then um, over here, uh, I had some more of that metal rod left, so I just made a bend out of it and just welded it on. Um, so there it is from the front. And uh, so it works. I was tempted to take the darn thing back because of these stupid wires, and I couldn't make it function correctly, so... I thought maybe it was screwed up, you know, a typical kind of Harbor Freight thing, but it's working. So now, uh, like I said this morning in the beginning of this video where I was initially going to start was I was going to initially weld this receiver to that piece of iron wherever it went. I think it's underneath where I painted over there in the back of the car. Um, and I had these anchors. Do you think I could find them? I've got them. I don't know where they are. But I've got them, but couldn't find them, so I had to make a run up to the hardware store. Two bucks a piece. There's four of them. I don't know where the other ones are, but they're in here somewhere in this pile of tools. Um, so that will allow me to bolt the uh, plate to the floor and the receiver to the, gets welded to the plate, and then we're good. I also welded on here a couple tabs. These are made out of some pretty heavy gauge stuff, and uh, they do clear, barely, but enough, good enough. And um, so you got to put those on first before you put the winch on. I've had this winch on and off here about a hundred times, but by the time I had it painted and everything, so. But it's on there. I think it'll work. I got the hole drilled for the for the five eighths here down there. That hole's drilled. All the way through so you can put the pin in it and uh, I think we'll be good I hope and uh, we'll go from there thanks for watching guys if you feel like commenting please do and uh, if you feel like subscribing that's even cooler and we will get back to you on the next project or the continuation of this project which is getting it mounted down to the floor um, so I can move my car in and out because I have to use my lift and it doesn't quite run. Well, it runs, but it's a pain in the butt to start. So, um, that's the winter project, but I got to get it out cause I got to work on my pickup that I drive every day. I digress. So anyway, guys, we'll talk later. Bye.